But Brandon, let's go ahead and close the podcast. Moving now into the NFL draft. And this is going to be a fun one because next Mm -hmm. week we have our second big board for the NFL draft. And this is a prospect on our first big board. Unless I am mistaken, both you and I, I believe, had him as the number one prospect on our big board the first go around. And we're talking about Saquon Barkley, the running back out of Penn State. And the the thing I want to talk about here is basically, could he be the number one pick in the NFL draft? Because right now, you look at the last mock draft for MVP, Mark and I both had quarterback going one, quarterback going two, Darnold and Rosen. However, the news that I'm hearing is that right now the Colts at three – they really like Saquon Barkley, and they're thinking about either a Bradley Chubb or a Barkley at three. However, could the Cleveland Browns pull a fast one and basically take Barkley number one, let the Giants figure out, hey, whatever quarterback you want to take, and then the Colts, you know, trade to whoever wants to take another quarterback We'll be fine between basically Darnold, Rosen, and Allen. We'll take the third one at four. What are your thoughts on that? Could Barkley be the first name we hear called when the Browns come to the podium on draft night? Yes, and I think he should. And I think that because what is what is Cleveland, and I'm not saying that one guy can save a franchise. It's, mm-hmm. it's just hard to ever do that or really say that this guy saved this franchise mm-hmm. um, by himself. But what is it that Cleveland needs? I mean, outside of wins, you know, what is it that they need? They need a playmaker. They need a playmaker. And and instead of trying to take a quarterback at number one and try and put him as the playmaker, why not get Saquon Barkley, who can be that playmaker all over the field, whether it's a kick returner, a punt returner, a wide receiver, a running back, make him quarterback, Mm -hmm. you know? That's what the Cleveland Browns need. They need a playmaker, a spark plug. Saquon Barkley would be just that. And I think it would behoove the Cleveland Browns to go after him and mm-hmm. take him number one and and pick him up so you know you have him. Because there is no, just because you have multiple picks in the first and second round doesn't mean that you can afford to wait on him. Because he is so good. Because there are reports that, hey, I mean, I could tell you the Cleveland Browns need a running back. The New York Giants need a running back. The Colts need a running back. The Broncos need a running back. You know, just because there's just there's two teams behind you mm-hmm. and then you again doesn't mean that you can afford to wait and assume that Barkley will wait be waiting for you at number four. And quite honestly, I don't think it's really all that important to go after a quarterback right away, only because you're going to get one. Well, you're going to be fine. I mean, you've you've already you've already done this whole go after quarterback after quarterback after quarterback. I remember you sat in this room, you did a video about mm-hmm. all the quarterbacks that they've had. That really yeah. hasn't panned out for you. Well, so why don't you go in a different direction? Also, I want to complete this thought, and I'm almost okay. Done. If you're Cleveland. Why don't you go and try and offer one of these top picks to someone like the Redskins? Don't trade. Who don't d- trade those who, picks, who, Brandon. Who don't who don't seem to really care about their quarterback. Don't trade them. And take their quarterback. Here's what I think should happen. And you can also hear this a little bit. Check out the onside kick this week for um we talked about best fits for Josh Allen. Here's what I think would be beneficial to the Cleveland Browns take Saquon number one the reason why you hit on it between one and four there's a better chance of you still getting a quarterback at four than Saquon still being at four because the Colts I have always thought about like the last mock draft we did I thought about having Barkley go to the Colts, but I didn't. I still kept I'm like, you know what? Ballard's going to go with a pass rusher. He's going to go with Bradley Chubb. But now that they're bringing in Josh McDaniels, why wouldn't McDaniels say, you know what? Let's take pressure off of Locke. 
I need something I can work with, either offensive line or a running back. Let's Frank Gore, you great job. You did a great job for us. You're too old to get out the door. You're we're not just go and retire. You. Just go and retire. Or go play for a team that still needs a running back. There's numerous of them. He could find a job easily. Go ahead and draft Barkley. If if the Colts are thinking about Barkley, then the Browns need to take him number one because another thing I look at is here's what's going on in my mind right now, and I don't know if I'm going to have this for the next mock draft, but I'm thinking about it. Barkley goes number one. Then the clock, the Giants come on the clock. They get their pick between Rosen, Darnold, Allen, Baker, Mayfield. I think they would go Josh Rosen because, or you know what, they could go basically Rosen or Darnold is what I'm thinking. Then what the Colts do is I think the Colts trade their pick. They trade back. They do a John Lynch thing, either the Jets or the Broncos. Probably the Broncos because John Elway's probably like, shit, I didn't expect Josh Rosen to still be on the board. Trade up, he gets Josh Rosen. So basically how I'm looking at it right now, Browns get Barkley number one. Darnold goes to the Giants because, hey, you know what? He's got the more potential out of him and Rosen, and we still got Eli. He can sit behind Eli. We won't have any pressure to start. Rosen might have pressure before Darnold has pressure. Then you have the Broncos trade up with the Colts for the— they would swap first-round picks, and the Colts would get some more picks, and then the um, Broncos would go ahead and take— Josh Rosen, guess who's sitting there at number four? Guess who is sitting there right at number four? Josh Allen. Browns take a quarterback if they truly want it right there at number four. And the thing that I think, and this is kind of, I I kind of was thinking in my head, like, should I say this? Should I not? Right now, after, because the big thing I'm doing right now, and I mentioned this during the onside kick, I've begun the homework for our film breakdown videos. Watched Rosen. I've watched Darnold. I've watched Allen. That's where I am in the process with the quarterbacks. And watching Allen, from what I've seen, the number one thing that I noticed from his film, I was like, dude is deceptive when it comes to play action. There were so many times he would throw the ball out there, slickly keep it to himself, Get the linebacker to jump, get a safety to jump, get somebody to jump because they think the running back has the ball and he can throw it down the field. What kind of a play action threat would that be? Would a quarterback with that skill with a threat like Saquon Barkley? Basically, you're saying, hey, we got a really good play action quarterback and we got a threat at running back that people can't sleep on. That people can't say, you know what, go for Allen because they're not going to give it to the running back. That's what you get if Isaiah Crowell is your running back, not if Saquon Barkley is your running back. The Allen-Barkley pair could be a good one for the Browns, and that's why I would say take Barkley at number one if I'm the Browns. Why do you say don't trade your picks? Don't trade them? Because I would say for the Browns, you need the one and the four. Take, Take Barkley, take your quarterback, get them together. I don't think Deshaun Kaiser's the answer. I don't think he's the answer. I know it's only been one year. I don't think he's the answer. I think Cody Kessler's time is done. I don't think Hogan is the answer either. That is why I wouldn't personally trade the picks. Well, I don't think that any of them are the answer either, but Mm -hmm. how many times are the Cleveland Browns going to burn themselves by taking rookie quarterbacks that do not pan out? How many times do you think they looked at film? And they saw, oh man, this guy's good. He's he's got this, he's got that, and then it turned out to be Brandon Whedon. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, how many times do you think that that happened to the Cleveland Browns? Well, I can tell you a lot, and it wasn't good. So that's why I said, and not, I mean, that was mm-hmm. just off the cuff. Yeah, trade it, try and get somebody who's looking to deal a quarterback and who's not really willing to. I mean, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. There is tension between Cousins and Washington. There is. He's not going to go to Cleveland. He'll go to he'll go I'm, to but, a team but, like Minnesota that but, could oh, win. Of course, no, 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 he'll no, go no. to Minnesota. I'm not saying exactly Minnesota, but I'm saying a team like Minnesota, a team like Denver, 
where they can sell him on, hey, you you can win a championship here. You can't win a championship in Cleveland. Well, quite frankly, he'd have no choice if he's traded. <laughs> well, yeah, that if they so, franchise tag him and trade so, him. But that's what I'm saying is I'm not saying that that necessarily has to be – it has to be Cousins. Mm-hmm. But why not – you know, wh- there's there's a number of other teams who, who I think would be willing to possibly trade a quarterback, mm-hmm. you know, if they were able to – maybe. Maybe, but but the, the reason I'm saying that, and it's a little out there, and I understand that, and I you know I I agree that it's a little out there, but why if you're the Cleveland Browns, mm-hmm. there is no time like the present to be a little creative, to be a little shifty, you know, and and try something new, do something a little different, go outside the box, outside of what you've normally done, which has led you to zero and sixteen. Here's one one thing I'm gonna throw out there to be devil's advocate to sure. that. And I know it's one example, but to me, the biggest mistake they've made in recent years, if they trade one of these picks, what was it, two years ago? The Rams trade with the Titans. Rams get the number one pick. Everyone's like, the Rams are going with Jared Goff. I'm sitting there going, great. The Browns get Carson Wentz. The Browns are going to have their quarterback of the future, and it's traded to Philly. They traded the pick to Philly. Why did they trade the pick to Philly? Did they not want that quarterback? And now I, I know hindsight's twenty twenty. And look at Carson Wentz before he got injured. Look at Jared Goff in L.A. But we knew the Rams were going to draft Goff. That's the quarterback that they liked. Part of me says don't trade the pick because it's like you're in a catch-22. Do we go for the drafting another quarterback like we always done? Or it's like, hey, look at this. We didn't draft a quarterback and he actually panned out to be pretty decent right now. But it, but it would have been different if they would have traded the pick to mm-hmm. get somebody to fill their quarterback role and, and position, not just more picks. And, and not just more picks where they could screw it up. Mm-hmm. That's so. That's what what I'm seeing. If seeing you're as the trading is, for is, Kirk Cousins, then I say, I'm, okay, you can trade it. I'm if I'm the Cleveland Browns, mm-hmm. truly. So because you have so many picks within the first and second rounds, mm-hmm. you get Saquon Barkley number one. Okay, good. There's one thing off the list. You got the yeah. number one wish list and item. And then look to and trade then the four. Look to trade the number four for someone who is willing to give you a quarterback that they already have on their roster. I completely forgot the whole reason why they have the number four. Not only did they say. No, nah, we don't want Carson Wentz. We'll they, trade with they, you. They didn't want uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson. Like, yeah. Like, and yeah. part of me feels like it's one of those things where it's like, will the Browns ever get it right? It's like, we're going to draft a quarterback, and he's a dud. The Browns would get it right if they went yeah. with Saquon Barkley at number one. Can they they would it? certainly get it right there. But the reason why I'm saying mm-hmm. it, uh, is trade the pick is I'm not saying to trade it for more picks. I'm saying to trade it specifically, shop it for someone else's quarterback on their team. And here's, I want to bring it back to Saquon Barkley sure. for a second. I'll because the, the whole thing with me is... We both agree, take them number one. Absolutely. If you're the Browns. Absolutely. You want to know it's another thing that I sit back and think why they should take him number one? Do you remember, or I know it's recent, but do you know who's going to be the new offensive coordinator in Cleveland now? He's coming uh, over from Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, Todd Haley. Todd Haley. Who did Todd Haley have for three of his four years? I want to say it was four years. Uh, I'm sorry. For four of his five years in Pittsburgh? Who who was his running back that was drafted in 2013? Yeah. Kind of a little holdout situation yeah, of Le'Veon late. Bell. Le'Veon Bell. Why not get Todd Haley, who I'm looking right now at an article from, where's this article from? From MorningJournal.com for Cleveland. The headline says, Todd Haley will change scheme and call plays as the Browns' new offensive coordinator. If he's calling the plays, he's changing the scheme because obviously Hugh Jackson's scheme didn't work of a run-first offense. If he's doing that, why not get him a running back that could be used? Not exactly because, I mean, Saquon's a little bit shorter than Le'Veon, but a back that they can use as, one, their main running option, and two, as a receiver out of the backfield. Here's another thing, and this is why... I was kind of like, right away, don't trade the pick. Because in my head, I was thinking Josh Allen would be there at four. And the thing with Josh Allen and people, like, the reason why I'm saying this now is I'm beta testing it. Where, like I said, I'm doing the homework for the draft breakdowns. And one of the parts 
in the draft breakdown video will be a pro comparison. And I'm beta testing this pro comparison with you guys watching and listening. I was watching Josh Allen's film. And you, you, you know what he looked like to me? A skinnier Big Ben. Same size. They're both 6'5". Skinnier Big Ben. That's what he looked like to me. Like how, and I know the NFL is a different, like the guys are bigger, faster, stronger in the NFL. However, watching him, they come in to sack him and he's hard to take down. Watching him get away from somebody trying to take him down and throw. And I'm like, at first I'm like, I've seen this before. I've seen, who have I seen? What quarterback have I seen like this? And then it hit me. I'm like, it's Big Ben. He's just skinnier, doesn't have the same size. He's about, I want to say like, what, 10 to 15 pounds? And that's me spitballing off the top of my head. 10 to 15 pounds lighter than Big Ben, but they're both 6'5". They both have the same height. Why not match? You're basically getting then the quarterback that could play a similar style to Big Ben who has a tremendous, yeah, his accuracy is not the best, but he's got all the arm strength in the world. And then you pair him, pair Todd Haley up with a running back also, like Saquon, who could be his Le'Veon in Cleveland. All you need then is your AB, and that could be Josh Gordon. I mean, Josh Gordon could be, I'm not saying like same caliber, but he could be your number one wide receiver in Cleveland, either him or Corey uh, Coleman. You know, I, 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 I think you, you know, said that perfectly and laid that out perfectly, but I, I think it's my, my feeling Mm -hmm. a lot of times with the draft is you are, and you, I mean, it is all the time. You're Mm -hmm. always taking a chance on these guys. Always, always, always. I mean, look at Ryan Leaf. You you don't know if they're going to pan out. Mm -hmm. Saquon Barkley, who was one of the best, who is, who is one of the best athletes and was one of the best in college, Mm -hmm. could pan out to be an absolute dud. I do not expect that in the slightest, but he could. And that's why when I look at that, I just, I, I look at the draft and I think we just truly never know. Is there a chance? We truly never know. Is there a chance that Saquon doesn't pan out? Like there's that, always a that's chance. Not, that's there's not always in, a chance. That's not injury based. Like in your crystal ball, could you see a future where Saquon goes maybe top five, and it's like, man, Saquon, he's good, but like they drafted him top five, and he's not Zeke, he's not Fournette, man. Because I'm looking at it on the other side where I see for I see what we saw in Zeke two years ago. I see what we saw with Fournette this last year. I think, like, Mark hit the nail on the head before we were recording yesterday of the days of yesteryear where you get Mel Kuyper. Don't take a running back in the first. 21 is too big to take a running back. I, that's not what Mel Kuyper sounds like. I just do that voice for everybody. <laughs> However, like, you get Mel Kuyper and he'd be up there. I don't know why they took Melvin Gordon at 21. It's way too high. We're three years. This could be the third year in a row we get a top five running back. Honestly, in my crystal ball, Saquon Barkley is going to be worth it. He's mm-hmm. going to be worth every bit of it. I mean, I, I think that he's really going to pan out. I Again, I think it's because he does so much. He's not limited to just running the football. He, it, You can put him anywhere pretty much on the offensive side, outside of the offensive line, and I think he's going to be just fine, mm-hmm. and maybe tight end. Um, but I, I don't foresee... Saquon Barkley being a bust in any in any capacity, even though he's going to Cleveland. I don't see him being a bust, even though Cleveland needs a lot of things. I think him going there, it's going to help. Like I said at the kind of the top of the segment, they need playmakers. And that's why I would forego going quarterback at number one, knowing you'll get a quarterback mm-hmm. at number four if you truly want one. You'll get a true playmaker at number one with Saquon Barkley. And I, I think it comes to, with the quarterback – and so there's been so much turnover in Cleveland at quarterback, at head coach, at GM. I feel like with what Cleveland's got right now in their GM, they've got somebody who is able to analyze talent. Mm-hmm. They've got somebody who is very, very strict and diligent in looking at talent and um, being able to make a decision and make it be a good decision, 
I, I really do think Cleveland is done with this crap of the past and how poor they've been and how poor they've played. And I, I really do believe, and I, I have some confidence now in, in the Cleveland Browns in terms of they are trying to turn this organization around. Mm-hmm. And I will truly believe that they believe that if they take Saquon Barkley at number one. Well, and the last thing I'll throw out, and this is a little bit away from Saquon because both you and I have agreed they should take him number one overall, but the senior bowl that we talked about last week where, first off, I got to throw out, you were the one that mentioned Rashad Penny needs a big day, right? Yeah. Yeah, he he had a big day at the senior bowl. had a big um, touchdown for um, the side that he was on. I can't remember if he was north or south. I think he might have been on the south team. Um, But one guy who had a good game, was the quarterback out of Richmond. And I'm going to screw up this name, so I'm going to preface this right away. Kyle Luletta had a big game. A lot of people impressed with him, FCS quarterback. Could you see the Browns, let's say they Saquon Barkley, number one overall. They do what you say and trade the fourth pick, but they don't get a Kirk Cousins. Could you see them going with a quarterback like Luetta who might have had a good senior ball or a Luke Falker like yeah we'll take someone in the second third fourth round and not take a Baker Mayfield or a Josh Allen at number four this 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 new guy that you mm-hmm. mentioned I don't know who that is yeah. so um I, I don't think I could could with honesty actually say him because but I don't saying, know anything like, about any him but the, the, the name two, that you mentioned the Luke Falk mm-hmm. maybe a look a Luke Falk Mm-hmm. And what maybe the Cleveland Browns need to do is not take one of those top quarterbacks. Because of the pressure that's associated with them usually? Not even necessarily that. And I know that people will be like, Brandon, come on. But where was Tom Brady drafted? Tom Brady was not a top five pick. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady was not a first Russell three Will- round pick. Russell Wilson. I mean... Aaron Rodgers. Look, I mean, look was later truly. On. I mean, look at some of these guys. I, I, I think that you don't always, you do not always have to get that top of the line coming out of college, quote unquote, guy, mm-hmm. because you can find good players later on in the draft. Aaron Rodgers was still first round. I know that, but I'm just saying he was like 20s was when he was drafted. Because I know someone in the comments section would say, but Ricky, he was still a first-rounder. The exact stat line for Kyle um, Luetta, just because um, I don't know if you knew his stat line from the Senior Bowl. No. 8 of eight of 12 on the day, 198 yards, 3 touchdowns, no INT. That's not, that's not too bad. I know it's one game. I know it's the Senior Bowl. Like Josh Allen had, um, he went 9 of 13. 158 two touchdowns on the day where Baker Mayfield went three of seven only for nine yards and his team got a field goal on that drive that he had. However, Baker Mayfield wasn't exactly sure if he was even going to play in yeah. the game that he had. So any final thoughts on Baker or not Baker Mayfield on Saquon Barkley and being number one overall in the NFL draft? Can I, can I be honest with you? Is that, it really necessarily doesn't have so much to do with Saquon Barkley, but mm-hmm. I'm actually s- excited for the Cleveland Browns. I feel like the Cleveland Browns this year could actually really help their team five, ten years down the line. Is by he going, Jackson the by, coach by, at the end of the year? By, yes, I do <laughs> think so. Because if they they bring in Todd Haley, offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. I think he's a good offensive coordinator. Him and Ben didn't get along towards the end. That's okay. But... You have you have Hugh in there at head coach. You have Todd Haley, proven track record for being a good offensive coordinator. You bring in the playmaker of Barkley. You bring in a quarterback, a new quarterback, a fresh quarterback, and hopefully, hope to God, Cleveland Nation, mm-hmm. it's the right guy. And then you 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 bring in a you know a cornerback, a defender, a, you know. I feel hopeful for Cleveland, and I may be the only one feeling that way, but I really do believe that they could do a lot of good things right here. They just have to pull the trigger, and I think they will. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Could Saquon be number one overall? Should he be number one overall? And let us know also what you think about anything we talked about today on the podcast if you're listening to it in full. Housekeeping here at the end. If you like what we did, make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most available podcast. 
Also down in the description with that link, you can find the information to get yourself an MVP t-shirt. Make sure to give the Primetime Podcast a five-star rating on iTunes and make sure to check out mostvaluablepodcast.com. Calm. The camera is shutting off. We went over Brandon on the time, so you're looking at the logo, but that's enough. That's all I need. As always, guys, have a good day, everybody.